Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. You heard many things about STIC just uh, prior to lunch, and uh, I will try to uh, give you some uh, practical uh, aspects to this uh, new technology. Actually, uh, I'm, I've been doing ultrasound and uh, fetal heart examination since, meanwhile, 20 years. And uh, to be honest, in my experience, there are three revolutions in fetal echocardiography. The first one was, over the years, the development of uh, a high-resolution uh, image. And if I remember how we started in the mid-'80s and what we reached to today, we can even see the coronary arteries on, on 2D in the fetus, if you want. The next revolution was uh, the advent of color Doppler in the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s. And all the other things, you know, transvaginal approach, abdominal approach, is, is, is only a kind of description or use of another probe. But this was not, let's say, this uh, revolution. And to me, is the, the third revolution, the use of uh, 3D ultrasound uh, for, for the fetal heart. Now, I've been working with uh, different systems over the years, and uh, since 96, I was trying to do some uh, studies on the 3D of the heart. But to be honest, I never assumed in which direction we will go. Similarly to, I will say, some other people using technology, never assumed that on one of these days, everyone will have his cellular phone and his two, three computers at home, and you will be... Uh, going to holidays, having your computer with you. No one will, could have imagined this in the mid-80s. There are things, if you don't try one of these days, you don't know where you are going to. And uh, I was wondering, and when people from companies came to, to the unit I was working at and asked me, well, the 3D of your heart, why should I use 3D at all? And this is actually what I suppose could be, well, instead of having uh, single plane of the four chamber view to have a kind of slice and to say, well, great, it looks like 3D because it's like the face that is the heart. But I learned in the meantime that uh, 3D is something different else and I hope uh, that you got already the, the message from uh, this visit course that what we used to do until now is to look at slices but what we are going to do in the future is rather to look at the volume where we can, if we want, extract slices, but if we want, we can render to see the whole volume together. And this is what we sometimes call uh, the transition from the 2D to volume ultrasound. If you look at what, happens in, uh, what happened in uh, radiology, uh, radiologists were doing X-ray of the chest, so it's nice to have a picture, but in the meantime, all data of CTMR are digitalized that you can uh, take the data again and out of these data reconstruct or look at some structures again and it's not a single picture anymore. And to be honest, ultrasound used in a normal uh, everyday life, if it's not done with this system, is still a single image. If you have a plane, you don't see what's behind and what's up, but if you have a volume, you can use it. In other words, what we are doing when we scan the fetal heart, we are scanning the fetus from the upper abdomen, uh, getting the four chamber view, the five chamber view, and uh, going to the three vessels. And what we do here actually is we move from the upper abdomen, we see the four chambers with the aorta, the crossing of the pulmonary trunk. And then when they finish the examination, we say, well, great, the heart looks good. And this is what we have in our mind, but this is what we are, see, what we are seeing all the time. But what we are doing now with 3D ultrasound is and this scheme was uh, given me, giving to me by uh, Bernard uh, from one of his talks, is we get a volume, and out of this volume, we can regenerate a so-called any plane. That means from one single volume, if you have a good volume, you can get uh, an image of the upper abdomen, image of the four-chamber view, image of the five-chamber view, the short axis, and so on and so on. And this is possible. You don't need to have experience on a 2D exam. If you have a good volume, you can sit quietly and do this. And on the second, in the same uh, way, you can, from a volume, go and get a rendering on, of all the details seen in the heart, not only a single plane, but a surface of the chambers, the demonstration of blood flow, the demonstration of uh, uh, the cavities by using the inversion modes, using B-flow, and I could add several other things uh, to this slide in order to show you that uh, volume does not mean always like the face or the hand or the projection. It could be used to use the classical 2D 
by regenerating some planes, but also to render the volume depending on the basic examination you, has, you have done. Now let's go to the basics because this is one of the most uh, common asked uh, ask question. How, uh, how, what is the trick to acquire a good stick volume? Actually, uh, the best way to do it is to acquire seven or eight. One of them would be at least good. If you think there is a single volume where you can have everything, there is really very, it's very, very rare to have it. The problem in all these things is if you don't use it on the normal, the day where you really need it for uh, some anomalies, you will have difficulties because you, can't, you cannot train on the single anomaly you will have, let's say, once a month or once a week or once uh, every six months. You should have experience on the normals and then on the day you will need it, you have a good preset on your machine. A good volume generally depends very much on the, how are the visualization conditions. If you have bad visualization, you will have in a volume, let's say, a volume of bad images, nothing else. But if you have experience in optimizing <coughs> image, this would be of great advantage. Because what you heard also from Bernard before, that the 2D image is very, very good if you uh, know how to adjust, and for vaginal ultrasound, the same. Now, uh, how, what is the principle of stick? I don't want to annoy you again with these uh, details, but what you have to, to, uh, to keep in mind is a stick is nothing else than a volume acquisition done more slowly than the 3D over a time of 7 seconds to 15 seconds. And from the images, the system analyzes after the single sweep these images here. And when these images are analyzed, they recognize, look at these uh, movements here, they recognize from the distance of these movements, the, uh, from this interval, they recognize the time and they calculate uh, the, uh, the heart rate. And from the calculated heart rate, they regenerate the whole volume. That means when you acquire a stick volume, the system asks you at the end, I suggest a frequency of 135 and you confirm or not. But if you have a frequency suggested of 68 and you have a normal heart beating, there is something wrong. I was explaining you this for the simple reason that if you have a good image quality here, you will have a good image recognition and a good volume at the end. If you don't have this good contrast image, you will not have a good result at the end. This is why try to get the image as contrasty as possible, not let it black white, but you know, but not a gray uh, lumen in the heart. And if you are scanning like this and you make a big box, you'll have very uh, small information to get this, uh, uh, this volume. Try to magnify your image prior to uh, acquiring a volume. This is why I use generally less than the chest to have my volumes, sometimes a part of the heart. It's better than if you have information where you don't have any movement uh, going into the calculation of the heart rate. Secondly, which is very important, is the uh, uh, frame rate. Now, in the newer uh, software since last year, when you have a wrong frame rate, the system tells you in a sentence the frame rate is too low, uh, you cannot get a good stick, but it wasn't that in the past. That means what we are doing here wrong way is we are, we get, we are getting a lot of information around the heart, which is of non-importance, and by adjusting the image properly, by doing more narrow and magnifying, you will have here uh, not 45 hertz, but one, 110 uh, 10 images per second. Now, why is it important? It's simply because if you have seven seconds of image acquisition, 7.5 seconds, with having 45 images per second, it's the quantity of information is less than if you have 110, double as many images for the same acquisition time. Th that means you will have, by the same volume, you'll have double more information only by making good adjustment of your image. This is why uh, before you start doing uh, the stick, check with one eye what, what's happening here around. It is, let's say, uh, for 2D rarely of importance, but it's when you use color Doppler and, and uh, HD flow and so on of big importance. This is why as high as you go with the hertz, with number of hertz, the better the image quality. Generally, generally, uh, a volume of a stick has at the end 40 single images, 40, 40. If you, have, if you are using color Doppler or power Doppler, you will have less than 40. Generally, the number, especially for color Doppler, is the half of the hertz number. That means if you have 40 hertz, 
you will have 20 images. If you have 25 hertz, you will have 10 images. But if you are going for 2D generally over 60 and so on, it's the 40 number. That means, in other words, the higher the image quality uh, and the frame rate, the better and the more images, single images you will have in, in a single volume. The next point is to uh, adjust in a way that black structure really looks black, look black, like by using CRI and SRI and uh, by in increasing the contrast and so on. These are some tricks because you will have a contrast image, you magnify the image, and by having good acquisition, it's easy. Now, uh, if I have a fetus lying like this, I will try to go with the transducer to get this image here from here, not behind the ribs, but in the region where there are no ribs, if possible, rather from anteriorly rather than taking by uh, having the shadowing of the ribs because they will still be there. Now, uh, some explanations of some basics. If you go and ask how can I improve my image, you will have under normal conditions uh, the so-called normal resolution and you'll have, let's say, lines you don't see. But these, the number of lines defines what we call the resolution. That means the lines, the frame rate, okay? These are the number of lines. We have a medium frame rate. If, for example, I want to have a rapid image, I will decide to have a high frame rate. That means the image is changing rapidly, but I will have single lines here and the resolution will be low. If I, will, if I want to have a very good image, I will increase the number of lines. This is on the second page when you use your uh, cardiac setting. This is called uh, resolution, high resolution, normal or, uh, or low. And if you have a high resolution, you are reducing automatically the frame rate. That means you should decide for a nice image to show in a talk, you take a high resolution, you have a very good clear data. But if you want to acquire a volume, the whole volume, don't lose your time here, go for a normal one. And if I use color generally, I'm more interested in the color, not in the 2D information. I will lower the resolution to have a higher frame rate, which is then, by adding color, will be reduced. That means if I go for high resolution on 2D and high resolution on color, I will have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, frame rate of 20. But if I lower it here, I could reach 35 or 40 and have then a, a, a better quality. This is on the single plane. Now, if we are uh, taking volumes or acquiring volumes, we don't have in one plane this resolution, but we have is a number of planes, so-called parallel planes. And these, the resolution in the, the third dimension, this one, depends on how you are acquiring a volume. That means instead of having lines, I have single volumes. If I want a high resolution, I will have many, many, many planes acquired within a single volume. For medium resolution, I have the normal number and low resolution. On the normal 3D, when you acquire a face, a hand, and so on, this here corresponds to low, and this corresponds to maximum. But rarely you really need maximum, especially in the newest version of the, the Volozone. Uh, the resolution is so good that if you use maximum, you'll see every single uh, artifact in the amniotic fluid, which you don't need. Sometimes it's better to go for really for high two or high one instead of having the maximum resolution. But uh, uh, you under I hope you understand that when you acquire within the 3D, by low resolution, you will uh, hit low, you will have uh, not a lot of number of uh, images, and you'll have a rapid sweep. And the same for the stick correspond not to low, mid, and high, but correspond to the time. If you acquire with seven seconds, you'll have within the same angle, let's suppose we have a, choose, you chose an angle of 20, uh, 20 degree, you have seven seconds acquiring 20 degree, but if you, if you decide to have 15 seconds, you'll have 15 seconds long on the same angle. Now, not always it is worth to have this high uh, uh, image uh, time because it depends rather on the, the volume depth. For later gestation, if the feet is not moving and you need, uh, let's say, a 30 degree angle, then you can go for 15 seconds. But if, in your, if you are scanning, uh, let's say, transvaginally at 12 weeks, you never use 15 seconds because no fetus will wait 15 seconds in the first trimester. Uh, rather, you will go for 7.5 or even stop it before. Now, how can you have an impression if the image quality is good when you are using stick? The first thing I do when I acquire a volume is not to look what's here happen, but to look what it's the B plane. Because the A plane is always good. There is no, I don't remember 
to have a bad A plane because the A plane is the acquisition plane. That means this is the plane you can see. It's, it's the A plane is if you are scanning this plane and the one before and the one up. The problems are rather, let's say, uh, uh, the, 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 the difference between the different planes in different levels. And you, this is you can see in the B plane. Here you can see if uh, the acquisition of the single planes and the corresponding uh, reconstruction here was appropriate. And by a single view to what happens in the B plane, you can recognize whether uh, the skin was well reconstructed or whether there were breathing movements or artifacts or fetal movements and so on. You, this here you can rarely see it on the A plane. Now this is here I turned slightly to show you some artifacts. This is hiccup during acquisition and of course you can't use the measurements when you see such uh, things and uh, maternal movements, fetal movements. But you know, to be honest, not all volumes like this one are bad. It depends what you want to do out of it. If you want to reconstruct, you can't use it because you will have jacked uh, shape. But if you want to use single plane, sometimes it's, it's enough if you want to look at the fourth chamber view. It could be a beautiful fourth chamber view, but the great vessels are of non-use. In other words, uh, don't, you, you rarely know on stage if the volume is excellent or not. Rare, I prefer in such cases to acquire several volumes and later on when you work on the volumes you can say well this one is good for the fourth chamber, this one is good for rendering and so on. That means for acquisition of the stick volume uh, I won't tell you that first you ha have to optimize your uh, time, uh, real-time basic image then as I told you high, uh, good resolution, contrasty, the volume box I ch generally choose between uh, 15 and 30 degrees Generally, at 20 weeks, I use the, uh, the 20, uh, 20, 20 weeks is 20 and 20 uh, grade, and 10 seconds is uh, uh, what I use in every fetus. Unless it's very quiet, I go for 12.5. 15, I use rarely, only in third trimester when I have a large volume and not moving fetus. But this is a major uh, message from this, to uh, from this uh, first part not only the optimization of the image, but you should know before what you want to do out of your volume. If you are intending to use it for rendering, you should uh, know what kind of rendering. If I want to use the inversion mode, I will do it very contrasty. If I want to use for color Doppler, I will uh, adjust without having aliasing. If I want to do you only for the plane, I don't matter if the foot, fetus uh, moves. If I want to look for the pulmonary veins, I will go lower with the velocities and so on. That means you should know uh, before what you want to, to use your volume for and therefore you will check which best which plane is the best. That means if you want to look at the aortic arc you will not get a transversal view and go up and down and then turn to get the aortic arc. You take a longitudinal view to look at the arc, you take a horizontal view to look at the, the, the four chamber view. You, if you want to focus on the great vessels, don't start by the first chamber view because you will have more abdomen and some vessels. Go for the three vessel level and acquire there. You know, you don't need always to have the whole heart within one volume to work with. You may need it for good talk. The, uh, some of my volumes are selected volumes, of course, but for every day's life, try to get for different planes and, and then you will know from your experience, ah, this kind was very good, what was the initial plane I started from and then you get your own uh, learning curve. And I recommend you, really, this is my personal advice from the whole talk, when you acquire a volume, go at least a couple of days later on the weekend and work with it. Because don't make the mistake what I've done to acquire volumes and then three months later to sit and to try to work and then you notice that all what you supposed to be volumes were still images or were, was a wrong uh, storing as uh, image scene and not volume scene and so on. There are mistakes by storing volumes and this is why you can only avoid when you try to work on the volume and you know that you did it the wrong way. The, uh, really, I would recommend you to do it, to work on the volumes and then you know that you are acquiring properly because in many units, many people are playing with knobs, and if one knob is changed, or someone came and gave you new, the new software on your machine, some things could have changed, and then you don't notice there until you need it just one day before your talk, and nothing functions. It happened to me once and uh, never again. So, now we discussed about volume acquisition, but what we are interested in is how to, this digital information we store properly, on one or two or five volumes, how we use it, how can we show this on the screen, to display this and how we can, how can we manipulate 
the volume. Now, the first step is the so-called multiplanar mode. At the beginning, I thought it is boring, but uh, I agree with uh, Bernard Benoit that for the heart, compared to other regions of the human body, is the, uh, the use of the different planes very, very important. Because the rendering, it, it gives sometimes nice images, but the clinical use is by far more when you use the planes. The planes, you can use them uh, uh, either by getting the so-called orthogonal plane. Uh, that means uh, all planes are, as you see here, 90 degrees to the other one. And this is the A plane as an acquisition plane, and the B and C plane are reconstructed images. Here it is, a, uh, it is not a stick, it is a normal uh, uh, 3D volume, but you see that uh, the A plane is always gives you the best quality, and this is why when you intend uh, later on to go through a body or through the heart or through a brain, uh, try to, to get the optimal plane as the first one, and then the volume will be up and down from this plane. That means if you want to look at the transversal approach of the head, I will get uh, a transversal view, the same for the arctic arc. If I want to get a good arctic arc, I will try to get the best I could and then make the sweep plus minus the angle. This is the most important uh, message, what you, because the other planes, B and C, are reconstructed planes. They are never existed. They are reconstructed from the single A images. This is the one way to look at orthogonal one. Uh, uh, wh what, is, uh, what is one of the m important things you should know? That if we have uh, uh, two planes, the intersection of two planes is a line. If we have three planes, like here, one, two, three, the intersection of all three planes is the point. In other words, the point you see here shows you the same region in every picture of the three planes. And this here, you can use it also for uh, when you navigate through the volume, because from this point you, where you place it, you can see in the B and C plane where you are. As an example, here is it, it, it is a ventricular septal defect. Sometimes you are not sure is it an artifact or not. You place the dot over the VST, and you look, it is the same here, and it's the same here. Yes, it is not an artifact. It's present in all three planes. Or if sometimes you want to turn, have you seen before Bernard, he put the, 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 the dot on the, on the border of the uterus and turned around, because this is the central point of the three planes. This is an easy way to navigate also through the volume. And you can get, as I showed you before, uh, single images from uh, the plane, uh, uh, assuming you know how to go there. Now, of course, you say, well, I don't have a lot of experience with the heart. Stick is by far more difficult. Actually, to be honest, I think, meanwhile, it's more difficult to scan life a fetus than to acquire a stick to work later on. Because uh, uh, if I could change history, I would return back. Everyone should store uh, uh, volumes and work on the volumes quietly instead of doing everything online. To scan online is very difficult, especially when you want to go to the Arctic art, to the great vessels, and so on. But if you learn how you come from one point to the other one, you may, you may get easier there than uh, you think. Now, we, we published about uh, the, the application of stick by doing these different planes uh, a paper a couple of years ago showing that by using color Doppler, we could regenerate from a volume uh, typical planes, the four chamber view, the five chamber view, and the three vessels, and show that in fetal anomalies, if you took the volume without knowing the diagnosis, you could uh, generate uh, <coughs> by these planes also getting to the diagnosis, showing here, uh, comparing to the normal four chamber view, an absence, or let's say hypoplastic left ventricle, no perfusion of the aorta, and reversal flow, typical image of a hypoplastic left heart. We found in our study that 90% of the normal and abnormal cases could be redone uh, by, uh, by the volume. Uh, but on the other hand, we, have, we found also that in later gestation, when you have a larger heart, you can do it with one volume. And sometimes if the information is not inside, it could be difficult to get the information there. Now, the next way to approach the heart is not to use orthogonal plane, but even parallel parallel plane, which was at the beginning not very common to us because it's new and it is used in tomography, in CT or MR. But uh, by this, in, when you look at this picture, you can understand why it has a big potential. Imagine now if you, if you want to document that the body of the fetus was normal, you should at least store 10 images to show 
what is present in one slide here. You see here the heart is pointing to the left, the stomach is pointing to the left. You see the fourth chamber, you see the spine, just in front of the spine you see the descending aorta and the inferior vena cava. The umbilical vein is in the middle, the gallbladder is on the right side of the umbilical vein, which is normal. You see some uh, portal veins, you see both kidney with the, uh, with the pyron, you see the attachment of the umbilical uh, vein, and you see the bladder. And uh, all information we need, you can even look at the, uh, the pelvic bone and so on. In other words, from one single volume, by getting the distance, and this is what I have now in my, in my, uh, uh, scan, my machine I'm using, the distance here, I, uh, done, I've done one for the 22 weeks. I scan the fetus, I make one volume, and have the whole images I need within one second. Because you, you don't need to change every time. You can store the preset to have the same distance every time for this one. And I have the one for the brain, one for the body. And you have with one single image the same information. The same we could do also for the heart. You acquire a volume and then by hitting one button you can see the, uh, the four chamber view, the ascending aorta and the three vessel view within one image. And if you look at by, by scene loop you may see them also moving or here also the uh, uh, diastole and systole. Now I will move to, uh, to show you a few examples before I continue. Let's take this volume. Now, there is, you can start the volume either by clicking on, on auto scene and start here, <coughs> or I do it generally by doing here, and I have the scene loop. What I do first always is to move from 100% to 50% because then it looks more quietly and then you can concentrate on the details you want. A, B, C planes. If you want to see one of the, here is the display format. If you want to see one of these, you click A and you have the A plane or B plane or C plane. You can magnify the image. You can change the contrast. Everything online. You can add SRI if you want. And what you could do here is use this one, this is my, uh, the, the, the knob I like most, is the kind of scanning, but you can't tilt, you have to move up and down. And you go front and back, that means I go to the upper abdomen, the upper abdomen looks normal, inferior vena cava and uh, aorta, stomach, the four chamber view, both pulmonary veins, tricuspid mitral septum, right ventricle, left ventricle. And you want to see the aorta, but for the aorta you need to tilt your transducer slightly. What you do here is you go to the rotation Y, and you can get it here. And now you take this point, you put it in the middle of the aorta, and you turn it the other way around, because in the short axis view, you have the aorta in the middle. And sometimes by turning you may make a mistake, so, and then you, you go to the initial position, and you are again at the initial position. So, now, some people say, well, it's difficult to go and to know how, how to get the three-vessel view. Then you go from this plane, and you observe what's happening here. You get, you, you get the reference slice up, and you see that you are going only parallel to the, from the four-chamber view to the three-vessel. And you see how it moved here. Now, if we look at the three vessels here, what we are recognizing here is the, this is the pulmonary trunk, this is the aorta, this is the superior vena cava, this is the trachea, the bifurcation of the trachea. We go a little bit higher. Now what we see here, what is this? The arctic arc. If you want to get an arctic arc, we need to, be, to have this plane exactly in the middle. I will put this on. I will turn the volume to have it exactly here. And then I will turn, as I was turning my transducer on 90 degree, <coughs> and you get your aortic arc. And the same, you take the dot, you put it somewhere here, and you turn again, and you will see the, the pulmonary trunk. Now this is the so-called, the different place we want to get. Now you can hit the button of tomographic imaging, and here you can decide whether you see only three images or more. 
And the distance between these images, you can decide here, it's 2.5 millimeters. And when you turn, of course, you will not turn one, you will turn all of these. Now let's take an example of an abnormality. And we take this four chamber view, slightly dark, but make it slower. What you see here is a pretty good looking four chamber view, but if you look at more carefully, you will see something abnormal, which is here, a VST. So sometimes I'm not sure, I prefer to use the color before I, sit, I look at this VST. Now let, let us look at the tomographic imaging. And from the four chamber view, I want to rotate to have a look to the five chamber view where the aorta arises, which is in this region here. I will turn, and what you see here in this image, you can magnify by scrolling. Wait, I will go step by step to look at the upper levels. What you see here is not only one vessel arising, but you see the parallel course of both vessels. That means here only from, from turning, you're getting the four chamber view and turning once to this direction, one to that direction, you see within a second that there is a parallel course. Now, imagine if you have a nurse working with you, one is taught to get volumes, the other one is taught to, to turn the Y knob. They have only to check whether the vessels here are showing the three vessel view or not and nothing else. You don't need really to, to go by yourself and to scan. But you know, uh, I, I think, and you will see at the end of the talk, that one of these days, all these things could be automated, getting even the image recognition and telling you the diagnosis. But uh, I think this machine will be very expensive. So what are the potentials of, uh, of STIC? You can do the examination offline. As I showed you, these are cases uh, a couple of years old or, or uh, fresh. You can get a second opinion. You can send a volume to friends and uh, uh, getting his opinion via internet or uh, per, per mail with the CD if he or she has time to, to have a look at. Uh, in Teaching Echo, we, we, we are doing courses for uh, uh, stick courses and uh, advanced course. And uh, you can ask by Marlene and Roland, uh, let's say in the early summer will be also a specialized course for, course for uh, using laptops to, to learn uh, 3D and uh, uh, stick. And uh, in the future, uh, it will be more in, uh, 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 experience with the automated examination. Now I move, after showing you the different planes, to the rendering in the third dimension. What we could do here is to get a volume where within the volume, look at the heart, and you can see the four chamber view. You can look at in the atria, the septum, and so on. And you can look at here within this heart to the AV septal defect. This is a case of an Epstein anomaly. Well, it looks like a 2D actually, but uh, it's more modern. It has color and it has volume and so on. But in many cases, it could be important. But I think as soon as you are, uh, get to use uh, the, the, the software, you can get there very easily. Now, this is hypoplastic left ventricle. This is dilated left ventricle with the critical artic stenosis. And you see the parallel course of the vessels rendered. Instead of having a look on a single plane, you can make a volume, you can see it better, and you can see beating. Now, uh, what you could do also is to generate new views you never saw before. That means what we see here is the, uh, the septum, the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the foramen ovale. But you can also cut the right heart and have a look to the septum, either from the right side or the, from the left. I will show you some uh, example how to, to get there. Now, if we have a look at the heart in a volume way from the up, if you want to look at the four chamber view, you will like the face. If you want to see the face, I will make the projection from here or from here, from, from the side. If you want to look at the heart, I will cut uh, the thorax and have a look from the up, or I will cut and have a look from down. It's better to look from the up to the four chambers. In other words, when we see here the sectional planes, the aortic arc, I will place the line. If I place it here, I will have the two vessels. I should place it actually directly under 
the, the aorta. So, please have a look, because this is this knob you don't know if you don't find if you don't know where it is. Settings, region of interest direction. It's not there, it's here. And then you choose. This is up to down, down to up, and so on. And this is from up to down. So, and then you place this line, as I told you, just under the uh, aorta. I go generally for random mode. I prefer to use gradient light. Less maximum mode like this one here. And let's have a look how it looks like. And then you can play with uh, some uh, thresholds and with the, some image setting by changing uh, the contrast and so on. Actually, it's not that difficult. But you have to understand in third dimension how to go there and so on. That means when you see the volume, it looks nice on one hand. But you know, actually, I don't care what happens in the great basin. That means you can have a good four chamber view for rendering, but you have very ugly movements in the great basin. You don't need them always. You don't need the perfect volume for everything. Now let's take another volume. That you can see the difference with the abnormality. And this is another small mistake sometimes. Here you see the, the rhombus here is the same here, but the rhombus is on the back side. Instead of turning the volume here, you should turn only the direction. Then you have the rhombus up. That, that means this is ventral, this is ventral. And this here is the left side, this is the left side. We'll change the... Uh, so, oops. And then you can scroll within the volume. And you see the gap here, an AV septal defect. It looks small here, but it's not that small. You see here, the, this is the gap here. And you can do it more slowly, if you want, the speed. You see the AV valves within one plane. And you see the gap here. Trisomy 21 with an AV septal defect. And a volume I think it's useful to learn from, which is this one. Sometimes I'm asked, can you see always the, the, uh, uh, the VST and so on? This here, this image show you why it's not obvious to see a VST. Now, this is the four chamber view. And there is a VST here on this septum. Some of you think, well, probably here or probably a muscular one. But the problem is that you are scanning a big septum. And if you are under or over the VST, you may miss it. And if it comes that this VST is in the shadow of a rib, you will always miss it. This is why it's always nice to use color Doppler. But what I do here now, I will go up. And this is a very large VST here. Mm. And in a plane before here, you couldn't see it because we're just under, under this one. So now if you go to the great vessels, you will see that you expect the aorta to go from here up. But in this case, you will see that both vessels are arising from the right ventricle and it's double outlet right ventricle. Now why I am showing this one? Because you can try to demonstrate this VST not by this way and not by giving a rendering, by, but by cutting here and looking from the right side to the septum or from the left side. Let's go and have a look to, from the left side. So what we are doing here, we see the render mode as I, as, as I was showing you before. You may see the VST here, but why do it that way? I will turn the volume in order to sit in the left ventricle. We turn it that way. And I'll go more inside the left ventricle. And what you see here is the whole septum, and you see the big VSC here. Did you get it? That means instead of having a look 
from the up, you cut, and we are now sitting in the left ventricle looking from past to the set of the effect, and we can even uh, measure it if you want. And if you add color, you can see blood coming through the VST and uh, away from you. In other words, we may have one of these days new views, and if you look at this heart, by turning the, the volume, you can see the tricuspid valve with the tri with the three valves and the mitral valve with the two valves because we have a new view to some structures we never saw that way before. We can use it for clinical approach. I will uh, pass over it here because this is the pathological specimen and this is the normal condition. Two AV valves. You are sitting now in the right, in the atria. Two AV valves, both great vessels. The pulmonary is just anterior to the aorta. In a septal defect, we don't have, let's say, uh, uh, dysplastic, only dysplastic valve. We have a so-called common valve. And this common valve, compared to the normal condition, is like this. And on 3D, you can see, if you place the camera in the atria, you can see a common valve instead of two valves I was showing before. That means if you have a doubt, you can have a look at it. And for surgeons, it seems very important to know the, the anatomy of, of the valves, and you can go by placing the camera inside the ventricles and getting the information how many papillary muscles can be seen and so on. I will just jump over this one, sorry. Now, how to render blood flow? We have seen now how to, everything uh, was done with 2D with the stick, and now we go to the uh, blood flow. We can use color Doppler, power Doppler, high, high definition flow with Doppler ultrasound, and you can combine both to get in static 3D, and you can demonstrate either the color mode alone or combined with the grayscale information, what we call a glass body mode. Then this one you can use it for, for placenta and uh, umbilical cord. This is the best way to start, by, to start choosing this technique because the placenta is not moving unless the woman, the woman is uh, uh, crying or doing something else. But generally, it doesn't move. And this is why you can have a still organ. You can adjust the color presettings and make the volumes and try to uh, use it. I do it, in every case I have an velamentous insertion or other abnormalities of the placenta, I try to get volumes because I think this is a way, nice way to work on. But you can also use it to demonstrate the abdominal organs in longitudinal view. It is really very easy done. It's not a big uh, difficulty, especially that if you have a good adjustment when you can follow the vessels onto the with the high persistence, you can make the volume and then get this plane. But for the heart, what we are doing generally is we are scanning from the fourth chamber view, then we go to the five chamber view and we move up and down and up and down to see the crossing of the vessels. And we go down and see, yes, I saw the aorta and the other one was crossing. And what you could do easier in future is to get a volume where you see that both vessels are crossing over each other. You, you may not need to, uh, to make these movements. You have only a volume. And if you make the preset that it gives you the, the image from the up, then you will have automatically this uh, kind of image on your screen. But the main problem is actually that people who are able to get these images are able also to scan. This is the... Uh, so now we can have a look to the Arctic art by using 3D, but by combining with the, with the stick, we can see the pulsations here, the pulmonary trunk, the ductus arteriosa, the Arctic art with the vessels and... Uh, and if you look at the vessels, the crossing of the vessels under normal conditions and the parallel course of the vessels if you from the up in, a in case of a transposition of the great arteries. Here for tiny vessels, the azygos and interrupted uh, IVC. This is inferior vena cava and aorta. In the fetus where there is no inferior vena cava, you see there is a lack of a vessel here and the blood, the venous blood is drained by the azygos, which is under normal conditions there, very tiny, but here dilated. B-flow is a other new technique, uh, sometimes difficult to use because on the 2D image you don't recognize many things, but once you have the volume, you can see all, uh, all the details, the pulsations and so on. But very popular is, you see here the VST. Very popular are other techniques like the inversion mode. Now I'll show you, for example, uh, what, is, what can be done by using the minimal mode. The minimal mode is not very often used, actually, but it was a couple of years ago very, uh, very often uh, used, and I like it personally very much. What we are doing here is we are getting information within 
this box, but instead of looking at the surface of it, we choose to have kind of transparency with highlighting every structure which is hypoechoic, like the bladder, the gallbladder, the stomach, the heart. And you see how we can do it. We choose the rendering mode. This is here is the surface mode. And then you choose uh, the size of the box. And by magnifying this image, you go to, uh, you see here the, uh, the lung, the diaphragm, the stomach. And instead of having looked to the, to, the, to the surface, you look at the minimal mode, which is a projection. And you see here automatically one image, the lungs, the diaphragm, the stomach. And by turning the volume, you may have a look to, uh, uh, to, the, to the vessels. Now, I use personally this technique in uh, sometimes to demonstrate aortic art, but more to demonstrate the presence or the position of the stomach compared to the other organs. Like here in the diaphragmatic hernia, you see the stomach is protected behind the heart. Or uh, in these cases, you see here the umbilical vein, the, the gallbladder, uh, the heart the projection like w the one on MR. And as I'm going to show you in this, uh, in this case, what we do here, I've done the same. I've chosen, chosen here minimal mode. We magnify this. One important thing to know, it's not a secret, but uh, if you put some amniotic fluid within the box, you don't see anything. You should avoid any single amniotic, amniotic pocket. That means do it the, thin, the thinnest uh, slice possible. And then by turning here, you can see the vessels. It's not a big secret. It's easy to, to, to use. And you can see the within one image here, the aortic arc as one. And then what you can see here is the stomach on the left side, the heart with the movements showing to the left. If we take this one here, on normal scan, you may think it's normal, but sometimes suspect that it's abnormal. But here you have the, the stomach on the left side and the heart showing to the right side. I use it in these conditions, but also in cases where the patient with the family history is coming and asks me, I, have a ch I had a child with the organs on the wrong side and so on, are you sure? I make the first the drawing, I show it's important, you know this is the normal condition, and then at the end I show her, look, this is the heart, this is the stomach, both are shown to the same side, and you have it on a single, uh, single picture. This is also an, e an easy way and uh, also to uh, visualize uh, kidneys uh, dilation. Inversion mode is nothing else than if you take this negative information and you everything showed in black is then inverted. This is the model of, of the heart. And the same you can give <coughs> uh, or you can reconstruct by uh, using uh, the inversion mode. It is, if you have, you have to imagine, it's if you take the heart and the whole information of the blood, the lumen of the heart, is filled with, uh, with something as a digital cast. And it's really like... Uh, uh, like this uh, digital, uh, like these casts of, of the heart. This is the right ventricle and uh, pulmonary trunk done by uh, Anderson from uh, plastic, and this is the same I've done cut from the volume. Now, what we can see here are two normal, no, two normal appearing four chambers, but the careful observer will say, no, this is not normal. But you may, if you don't magnify, you may miss it on normal condition. I'll show you the heart. This is here the projection of this volume. Right ventricle, left ventricle, pulmonary trunk, right atrium. You see the palisations and so on. Look at this one here. The same chamber, because it is not changing the size, you see that the right chamber is not moving. And here the vessel is not opening like this one. You can stop at the end of systole and diastole, cut everything and measure the volume of the scene. That means you may have uh, possibilities of doing uh, more research on this field. Vessels crossing versus another one here where you see the pulmonary trunk and the interrupted aorta in one case. I will show you how to get the volume out of it. Now you see here, this is uh, the volume of a heart. And I will switch first to uh, the minimal mode. I could narrow 
to see more brilliant details on uh, the four chamber view and the projection of the aorta and so on. Now we adjust the image here, we magnify and we make it slower. Sorry. And then afterwards, we go to the render mode and you ha have only to click on inversion mode. It changes completely directly the colors. And everything which was black, the lumen of the structures is then now uh, gray. And you can here still change uh, with the threshold, increasing the threshold to see more structures. And you can see things I never saw before, like the so-called right atrial appendage. These are things you rarely see prenatally. You don't see only the right atrium, but the appendage. And if you turn, you may see here somewhere hidden here the left atrial appendage. And if you advance through the volume, you can cut the pulmonary trunk, the right ventricle. Here, let's go inside and then have a look to the aorta. Oops, and here I cut them now. This is here, left ventricle. I always want to be cardiac surgeon, but I, I don't like blood. This is a way to operate the heart without having one drop of blood. Okay. And then you can turn everything. Now, we, this is actually really easy done, but the secret of a good uh, volume with the, for inversion mode is really to have a contrast image. Where are we going to? What is the future going to show us? I think uh, early fetal echo is very important. I mean early, not when you start doing fetal echo between 8 and 10 in the morning, but early in pregnancy. Now you can see here with the new uh, equipment with the E8 at 13 weeks, uh, good images are complete. This is here 12 weeks plus one. You see all details we need. And for me, very important, the contrast we need for a good, for a good volume. You can see the excellent uh, high definition flow where you can see all details, the trachea, 13 weeks plus zero, the trachea, uh, the, the pulmonary trunk, the aorta, superior vena cava, the spine, and so on. An AV septal defect, 12, 13 weeks, overriding of the aorta. That means we, we are able today to do early diagnosis, but generally we do it only on high-risk pregnancies like thickening of nuchal translucency or uh, family history. But from these images, we can do the same. We can acquire a stick volume, 12 weeks plus 6, the three planes. That means another person can have a look at it and demonstrate that there is a VST, and demonstrate that there, is normal, uh, there are normal cavities, and you can render with the surface more 12 plus 6 and you can use it also for to get color Doppler information with the HD flow the whole information we need you have the upper abdomen we have the four chamber view we have the erasing of the aorta and we have the three vessels with the trachea and so on pointing to the left the whole complete information within one single image of the beating heart at 12 weeks uh, gestation and if you want to give a rendering you see within one volume the whole information done what is the, the future or what are the, the next uh, steps uh, which are prepared or already done uh, is uh, what uh, Abu Hamad called the Sono Volume Computer Aided Diagnosis. And this is, was now proposed for the heart, but it could be applied in soon future for other uh, body organs. The idea he had is that uh, when you look at uh, a fetal heart, and you know that, uh, let's say, uh, at the gestational age of 20 weeks, the distance between the four chamber view and the ascending aorta, for example, is known. You can calculate it, you can measure it here even from this plane to this plane. And this changes throughout pregnancy. And the angle how the aorta is arising from the left ventricle is known and could be changing. Now, if you sit and you acquire hundreds of volumes and you measure all these things, you, can, you will find, let's say, the, uh, the range of normal. That means the distance of the aorta from the four chamber view could be 8 millimeters plus 1.2 uh, millimeters. Okay. If you give this in a program and you make it as a standardized plane, you can automatically get from the four chamber view to all these planes you want to. Because 
as soon as the system knows which station edge you are and you give them the original plane, you can get by a macro there. And this is what, what, he, uh, uh, what he developed and what the engineers developed in the company. That means uh, by standardizing the plane here and then getting to the macro controls. This is, he was one of the test uh, systems. And then we say, well, we save the position. And then by having all the volume stored that, that way, or if you, if you don't have it in this position, you can turn it until you have the heart pointing to the, to the front and you have the dot over the cross section. Then you hit the button aorta and automatically you will have the image of the aorta ascending here. And then you can return back to your sectional planes and say, well, I return to my original plane and want to have a look to the three vessels and so on and so on. And I'm, I'm really sure that for fetal scan in the future, we'll have for more than one organ the possibility of having a volume, putting the dots on one plane, and then the system regen generates the typical images and compare them with, uh, let's say, schemes. And if they do not uh, fulfill the criteria, it will say, well, these are parallel vessels. This could be transposition, some suggestion. I think the aided diagnosis via computer uh, will be done, but still, uh, doctors will be needed, especially experts like you and me. And uh, now with this uh, program, which was developed first on a software, is now added in the, the E8 machine with a scheme. I don't like the scheme, but this is, uh, this is the first step probably. And then you can acquire a volume and then put uh, the spine and uh, the ribs here. And then the different knobs, you see the four chamber view, and then you can... Uh, you can get the next planes where you see the aorta and so on. It's already on the machine, but we hope or we think that in future it will be available for more than the fetal heart. I guess that some of these will be uh, shown uh, at the next meeting or let's see some new things uh, in, in the meeting in Izuog in, in Florence uh, uh, next autumn. So I come to the end and I hope I gave you some ideas what you can do, but be careful. If you think that 3D is uh, accelerating your examination, you are wrong because you will do, you will uh, generate more volumes, more data, and you will rarely have free time because if you have some free time, if you are really fond of the technique, you will sit and try to render volumes. But uh, the communication is very, uh, uh, very, let's say, very large. When I sit sometimes on the weekend or in the evening and play with my, my laptop or my, my uh, a computer. Uh, sometimes there is some f uh, call over Skype, and Benoit is on the other hand. What? And you know, we have the camera and say, "What are you doing now? I have a nice volume." He sent me his volume. I sent me his volume. Oh, look at this picture. Oh, what, what was this case? And so on. That means if you if you can join the conference, we'll sit day and night and work with this. Especially that now my nights are, uh, as you have seen at the beginning, uh, very short due to my recently born daughter. Okay, I thank you for your attention and then uh, hope if you have some questions I can help you in answering some of them. Thank you.